Life is different. It's different in the suburbs. I realize that because I live in the suburbs. Now, it's different. Like Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving different in the suburbs. The white people be having nice Thanksgivings and an end on time and everything. <laughs> in the hood, our Thanksgivings didn't start until like 1 o'clock. They had to give out flyers. Females free before 12, you know? There was dudes outside our apartment talking about, yo, is bitches in there? Thanksgiving in my house didn't start until somebody opened up that Smirnoff. <laughs> it's going down right then and there. I always had that aunt that was a Jehovah Witness. No, she ain't supposed to be celebrating no damn holidays. But she showed up anyway with her crazy family because somebody cooked. <laughs> and she the first one. Nobody paying her attention because she just Jehovah Witness shit all her life. And as soon as she get drunk, she the first one to pull that titty out. She's dancing, doing an electric slide with it out. You cannot see it in the electric, but you hear it, nobody's there. I want to prove. First one gets drunk and want to tell the truth, and we all love it. Hope she bring up Cousin Lonnie. We all know he got a little something, something extra on the side. She'd be the first one to tell the truth. Bobby is not that boy's father. And the boy sitting right there, he's 44 years old. Bobby's not that damn boy's father. Y'all know it. Bobby's a good man. He ain't that damn boy's father. He ain't right there crying. I hate y'all. Y'all ain't no family. Every Thanksgiving, y'all gotta bring my father into it. I can't wait to go back down south, man. Then her husband, Uncle Rick, he crazy. I went to their house one time and I knocked on the door, right? He was on the other side, he knocked back. <laughs> I said, Rick, you in there? He said, Rick, you in there? <laughs> I said, Rick, you crazy, man. He said, Rick, you crazy, man. <laughs> I ain't like spending it at her house. I was like eight years old. And we get ready to go to bed at night and she want to threaten us with Armageddon. <laughs> I can have nightmares about Satan. I remember she used to take us on them Bibles, you know, they give out the books like six o'clock in the morning and nobody like Jehovah Witnesses knocking on their door. But that's the only time your moms let you curse. <laughs> Mommy, the Jehovah Witnesses is at the door. Well, curse at them and tell them to go away. We don't want them damn books. <laughs> and you be at the door like this in the peephole. You better get the fuck away from my door. I'm gonna murder you, motherfucker. I spit it down, motherfucker. I'm gonna murder you, bitch ass, motherfucker. Bitch ass, motherfucker. Make pussy ass, motherfucker. I'm gonna murder you, pussy ass, motherfucker. Did they leave? No, mommy, they still there. But do it again. I'm gonna kill you, motherfucking bitch ass, motherfucker, fuck my bitch ass, motherfucker. Then I had my uncle Buzz. That was my grandmother's baby. She called him her baby. Up until I made it, he was the superstar of the family because he went to Vietnam when he was 17 and he lost his leg in Vietnam. But my grandmother don't use the word lost his leg. She say, blown off. <laughs> she don't know how to pronounce blown. She said, it was blown off. <laughs> and nobody in the family like him. Nobody like him. He like 63 years old now and lost three wives, got a $50 a day coke habit and he's mean. And he come over to the house for Thanksgiving. We don't even go down there and help him out. He got to put his wheelchair out the car. He got to put his wheelchair up and get in there by himself. And we be just looking at him in the window. <laughs> Can't stand him. Who invited him? You invited him? Kathy, you invited him? Ain't nobody invite him. Ain't nobody invite him. All of us saying this in the window. Ain't nobody invite him. Who would invite him? Joseph, did you invite him? Ain't nobody invite him. And he come upstairs. He want to terrorize the kids with his missing leg. Come here, little nigga, I'm put this leg on you. Come here, I'll put this leg on you. And the kids get scared, and one of them has said something about them. They said, your wheelchair pillow stink. <laughs> and he just sat there and started crying. Because <laughs> we thought he was bad. Because he got his wheelchair gloves on. The ones that's cut off at the fingers. So we always thought he thought he was bad. Then he attacked my aunt because she's 28 with eight kids. 
or she'd have kept her legs closed, she wouldn't have all them damn kids. And she go off, why are you always talking about my kids? This is my kid. You ain't got to say nothing about my kid. Cause he always talk about my kid. This is mine. I'm not like you. Cause he always talk about my kid. Don't be talking about my kid. That's why your wheelchair pillows stink. Watch when all these fathers come home from jail. They gonna fuck you up. And then my grandmother, she was, like when he lost his leg, she was traumatized. So she still think he's that 17 year old boy, her baby. And she come out the room with this obvious wig on, a nightgown filled with grease stains. And she come out there and she turned to Mahalia Jackson behind him. Who in here yelling at this baby? His leg was brutal. In Vietnam. And every time she said Vietnam, her wig be crooked. This baby's leg was brutal. In Vienna. Oh, damn it, Grandma, just take the wig off. It's right here, it's fine. Don't worry about it, it's fine. 